everybody, Thursday night, 9 o'clock time for the handicap, the rugby, rugby chat that matters. And this is the last handicap of the year. Why you ask? Because there's still plenty of rugby to come. Well, I'm heading off to the UK in the early hours of tomorrow morning to watch my son on a rugby tour. Looking forward to it, but I'm absolutely drained and exhausted, so excuse the odd slur. I promise you it's got nothing to do with the old beer that I've decided to drink, uh, I think, in, in honor of the conductor tonight. So, yeah, good to have you guys on the show. Let's introduce the panel. I'm going to start off at the bottom. He's had a, a, a bit of a layoff from the show. I know he's got a lot of different commitments he's working on, so unfortunately we're not going to probably have him on the show as often as we'd like next year. But uh, welcome back, conductor. I mean, your, your Twitter fan base is going to love the fact that you're back on the show. <laughs> Thanks, Brenty. Yeah, and it's uh, always good, good to join you and Neil uh, for, on a Thursday night to talk some rugby. And yeah, it's been a, it's been a good couple of weeks for myself. Really been enjoying the rugby. And uh, yeah, I've got a couple of exciting projects coming up, uh, which I'm looking forward to in the new year, which is a, yeah, which is exciting personally. But uh, yeah, looking forward to this weekend's rugby, URC, uh, Gallagher Premiership, and obviously for the guys that uh, enjoy a bit of ups and downs the dubai sevens so yeah it'd be very decker to join your boys and hopefully we can make some money excellent well they are i was amazed when i was loading the fixtures just how much rugby there is this weekend and uh yeah i got the call from neil as well and that means that he's confident on quite a few picks this week i can tell you neil great to have you back on the show you and i've been doing a few premiership shows but it's been a while since we had you on a thursday night and great to have you looking forward to the weekend no, Brent's cracking weekend up ahead. I just thought last show of the of the year, um, I might as well just stick my neck out, throw a couple of winners out there for the boys, and and see where it lands. So yeah, couldn't leave couldn't leave you hanging dry. Had to had to give you a good send off into your into your UK trip. So excited to pick a couple of winners and share share the feast with the conductor here with all the lines that we have available. Excellent, and I must say, um, yeah, the, it'll probably be the last best bet news out of the year. Last uh, last week wasn't a great one, unfortunately. So um. Yeah, get on board that. And I know the boys will be giving me plenty of ammo for the echo. It would be nice for me to hit that one. And in fact, because I'm not going to watch a lot of rugby this weekend, that's probably what I'm going to do is load up on an accumulator. And I'll include that in the newsletter. Might go out tonight at what might go out tomorrow. Xavier coming in in the live chat, uh, just saying, I hope to make up for last weekend's last man. You're not alone there, Xavier. Very much looking for that. And uh, Mark Dunphy wishing the conductor a belated happy birthday. So, uh, Steph also joining us. So thanks to the boys in the live chat. It really is what makes this show so special is all the contributions we get. But gents, I'm going to get straight into it because we've got a lot of rugby to talk about. And let's get, get straight into the, the URC. And uh, Neil, I want to start with you here. We've got the Sharks minus 18 and a half against the Ospreys. We've got a total points lines of 53 and a half. This handicap has moved in the Sharks' favor, certainly on the back of team selection. I know uh, we'll get to him in a second. Conductor was on them early in the week. But Hell, what an awful performance by the Sharks last week. That must go down as one of the worst performances by favourite in history, if not the worst. Yeah, spot on, Brent. Um, luckily, I wasn't I wasn't too involved in the in the Sharks minus. I I got into some early value. I think Ash Conductor pointed it out to me on that under fifty four and a half um, with Frank. I think it was Frank Murphy on the whistle. So that was that was obviously cracking value there. But yeah, I mean, not not much needs to get said about that Sharks performance. It was just. It was just one of those where you just have no idea what you're, you're what you are watching, for the good, for the bad, for the ugly. Yeah, it was just an, it was just an absolute horror show for the Sharks. And to be honest, I'm I'm quite happy that that it happened at, at sort of the time it did. If if the Sharks want to move forward, they had to ditch Sean Everett. Yeah, I'm sure he's a he's a, he's a fantastic guy and a good oak to play a round of golf with and and share a beer and a and a pie at the halfway house. But if if you want to build a URC winning side, he's definitely not the bloke to to take it forward. So. I think that the Sharks did what they needed to do, got rid of him, and into the new new era of, of Sharks rugby. So I think this handicap opened at about 13 and a half. It was cracking value. I'm not too sure why it opened so low um, with, with the fact that the Sharks were always going to bring back a couple of players after the after the Storch performance last weekend. But shifted out rightly so to 18 and a half. I still think that the Sharks will will cover the spread. So yeah, full uh, full full confidence for me on the on the sharks minus. This is going to be an absolutely no nonsense approach from Neil Powell and Co. Um, this is going to be shut out rugby from the sharks. I'll look for an unders unders and Osprey points at about 16, 17 and a half. No love for the Ospreys here. Full love for the sharks and and let's bring it home on a Friday evening on the USC. Excellent, nice confident chat there by thoughts on sports and plenty of nodding going down at the bottom of the screen by the conductor. Conductor, before you get into this, I just want to talk to you about your unders play last week. But told you before the game, you were under 53 and a half, I think. I mean, under 49 and a half again. But if I told you before the game that Cardiff would score 35 points, how would you have felt about your unders play then? 
Are you on? You're on mute, conductor. Ah, oh, sorry, Brenzi. I would have been I would have been sweating like a gypsy with a mortgage if you had told me uh, the, they would have scored 35 points in Durban. But uh, no, that was an absolutely wild, wild game. Um, she's the M. Uh, yeah, that, that downpour came down. Um, that was like manna from heaven for Cardiff. They, they felt like they were being, you know, at home. And they basically like had ordered it from Uber and it had just been delivered on a platter for them. Uh, you know, and the Sharks just really, really battled. It's it just one of those days for me. Yes, I, I do agree with what Neil has said regarding Sean Everett. I think... Um, I think he he did do a good turnaround at the Sharks, but I think his tenure had, had run its course. Um, I, I think now is the time that you really want to take the Sharks into the stratosphere, where where the amount of money that they've invested in the club, uh, where they you know where they need to sort of start realizing those returns. Um, so full value to Sean Everett in terms of what he did, but I think now there's other guys that can take it forward. I just think that game was just one of those days. Some, da some days you wake up and you just know it's not going to be your day. Everything went wrong. Uh, poor Anthony Foreman had an absolute shock at the back. Um, as uh, Paul Williams on Twitter said, it was like trying to catch an eel in a, in a bath. It was just, yeah, it was incredible. And then obviously that penalty try by uh, Manus Potkita was so dumb. I mean, all he had to do was try and make an attempt to try and dot it down. Instead, he sort of slapped it upwards and out and that resulted in the penalty try. So... Everything the Sharks did was incorrect and it was, yeah, it was poor. Um, and a full value to Carter for taking advantage of that. I think this is a different, completely different situation tomorrow night in Durban. Um, I think it's one of the guys on, on the forum said he's a wounded animal. Um, every single Bok player, uh, except for Sia Khaleesi and Evan Etzebeth, has been recalled. Um, as I said on Twitter, I took the minus 13 and a half, uh, knowing the fact that Jaden Hendricks would be back. Grant Williams would be back. Uh, for me, that nine is so crucial to the Sharks. Um, yeah, I mean, uh, you know, Cameron Wright's not bad, but, yeah, I mean, Jane Hendricks is, is a different gravy. And uh, Mchunu back, uh, you know, just that front row with Saudi, Bongi, and Ox is just a, yeah, I mean, that's just a different class. So I completely agree with Neil here. Um, I'm on, I'll still take the minus 18 and a half. I'll look at the Sharks' overs. Um, uh, then, uh, yeah, I'm, I've, as I said, I've already got my minus 13 and a half uh, on, on the board there. Uh, but, yeah, I mean, I, I see a really uh, very determined um, performance by the Sharks here. Uh, it won't be any frills or, or any won't be any anything beautiful. It won't be gorgeous, but it'll be very determined, very workmanlike. They're really going to put the points on the board. It's a, it's a very weak Osprey side, in my, uh, in my opinion. Um, and then the reverse fixture... Last year in Wales, uh, Sharks won one by fourteen. So, in my opinion, this is a weaker side than they played. They played the Ospreys last. I mean, Anscombe was playing that game when they're playing Wales. So, uh, for me, there's no reason why uh, Sharks can't cover this cap. Right. Let's move on to the next game in Edinburgh, up against Munster. Here we got Edinburgh, very slight favourites at home against Munster, who beat Connacht last week. But Henrik, I must tell you, his best bet came. Landing home McConnor plus there. And here we got a, a points line conductor 44 and a half. Yeah, Brenty, I was originally lining this up um, for a Munster win. Oh, sorry, sorry, for an Edinburgh win because obviously Edinburgh arrested their players for the trip away to Italy against Benetton last week. Um, now they've subsequently brought their eight internationals back for this game at the Dam Health Stadium. Um, and also, I think they've brought a couple of other players back like Velikot as well. Uh, so it's a much, much stronger Edinburgh side and a very, very dangerous looking Edinburgh side. If you look at that back three of Wes Gerson, Darcy Graham and uh, Duan van der Merwe, that's absolutely electric with uh, Mark Bennett and Christine. Yeah, I mean, that's very, very dangerous back line. Uh, but, you know, earlier in the week, Graham Roundtree has said that uh, his focus at the moment is just accumulating points in the URC. I thought they might rest players because they've got a big game against Toulouse next week. In the Champions Cup, and that's obviously on the peripheral of a lot of these teams as you're facing big European opposition next week. So I had a feeling that Munster might rest players, but he quickly put that to bed and said, "Look, his main focus is winning URC, and they'll worry about um, you know Europe later." So you know he's named a very very strong Munster side. Obviously, still missing guys like Conway, um, Fekitoa, 
but nonetheless, you know, still got guys like Tad Byrne, uh, Peter Mahoney. Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, Scannell, Lofman, uh, John Ryan. I mean, it's such a strong Munster side. Um, I'm not going to tinker with, I'm not going to try and attempt this uh, handicap. Um, if I look at the history between these two, uh, when the game is played in Edinburgh, it's often very, very low scoring. So I'm going to take, I wouldn't look at the 44.5. I'd probably look at a 47, 48.5 at like 1.7. You can get, I think, 1.7 at WSB for 47.5. I look at the unders, um, just but just purely on the history of these two teams, it's is generally quite low scoring. And added to the mix, uh, Matteo Renal is an unders referee. Uh, so that, for me, I'd be happy on that. Uh, in terms of the winner, I, I don't have a big feel here. I think Munster are taking it very seriously, as are Edinburgh. Sorry, I just... Excellent. Sorry if I interrupted there. I think my Wi-Fi is playing up here. Neil, if you can hear me, take it away on this now. Yeah, Brent, I think it was a fantastic synopsis from the conductor on, on the fixture. Just two teams, in my opinion, they're both fighting with sort of a, a blunt sword here. Um, just It's just going to be a cold, cold sort of night in Edinburgh. Yeah, you could look at the, the Edinburgh side and see that they've got a couple of of big guns out in the in the outside backs, Duan Fana Mava, Wes Hoos and, and Darcy Graham, like electric outside backs. But I think like Munster are going to completely nullify sort of that threat. They're going to put a lot of a lot of up and unders on on and pressure on the outside backs. They're going to cram them for space. They're going to kick to the corners, put a lot of pressure on at the on the on the set piece. So, to be honest, this looks like classic international rugby in my opinion. And when I sort of get that get that inkling, I just look at the home side and and look for any reason not to back them. Um, in my opinion, you always got to favour the home side in in these sorts of fixtures, and just Edinburgh looking looking just they're looking quite good at the moment. Um, I, I really like the the nine ten pairing of of Velikot and and Kinghorn. It's it's a concern for me that Kinghorn's a bit shaky off off the tee. That's a that's a big concern. But Vel, uh, Velikot's got a fantastic boot on him. Likes to likes to take the pressure off his ten and kick off the base quite a lot. So that brings a lot of confidence in me. And then just Jamie Ritchie just commanding things from from the open side position there. So he just adds a lot of uh, sort of I don't know confidence in me. Captains the captains the Scottish international side. So I just look at this. It's 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 somewhat of a close to a choice game. Munster woefully out of form. It's it's tough traveling away. And I just think that at eight to ten at Edinburgh on the board. Yeah, it's too it's too difficult to ignore that. So I'll be taking a big strike on that Edinburgh on the board. Yeah. Uh, we'll stick with you thoughts on sports for the next game. Stormers minus 23 and a half against the Dragons. And here we've got a points line 2.5. Yeah, Brent, I think this is where some cracking value lies, in my opinion, in, in this game. So you're getting a you're getting a 23 and a half half point handicap with Stormers probably missing quite a few of the internationals. Yeah, they might integrate one or two this week. Uh, but this game is getting played on neutral turf over in Quebecer at um, the Nelson Mandela Bay Stadium. Dragons have roped in Bradley Roberts from international duty. I, I thought Dra Dragons sort of gave an account for themselves last weekend against uh, against the Lions. It wasn't the worst display I've ever seen. Yeah, I suppose that you could say that didn't look too threatening. But I just think at twenty three and a half, this this is just far too big for me. This is a this is a fifteen and a half, sixteen and a half point handicap. Stormers, I think they played superbly against the Scarlets, but Scarlets just held back in defence the whole time. That, like that was that was one of the worst Scarlets performances I've, I've, I've honestly ever seen. They, they went over there with with a relatively experienced side and just went fronting up to tackles or anything and just lost the game by seventeen points when it should have been like a an eight to twelve point uh, point game in my mind. So twenty three and a half. This is complete disrespect, I think, to the Dragons. This this knocks off my best bet of the of the URC. I'm I'm big on the Dragons here. So. Yeah, that that gets my nod. So either either that or look look to a Stormers Stormers unders. It'd probably be at about thirty eight and a half, or either a, a Dragons overs at about what's that about fourteen and a half, fifteen and a half. Yes, fourteen and a half. In fact, I think I looked at it. Yeah, I looked at that market earlier. It was about fourteen and a half. I was, I was writing the preview and, and considering that as an option. Yeah. guys. First Friend, of all, just apologise. My Wi Fi is really on the blink. So if I talk at inappropriate times, please excuse me. Um, conductor, do you want to hop in there on that one now, if you can hear me? Yeah, Brent, it, it, it's, a, it's a tough one. Hey, I mean, you, you obviously, if you wanted to be on the minus, you would have liked a, a slightly lower minus in this respect. Um, and as Neil says, going to Nelson Mandela Stadium, uh, the weather looks cracking in PE, uh, and the, actually the pitch looks amazing, seeing as never really sees much uh, 
match play. Um, yeah, this is. <laughs> yeah, what, what happened to the Kings? But um, yeah, I mean, this is a, a tough one. To, I, I watched the Dragons last week, and when they're away from Rodney Parade, they, they call that Rodney Parade effect. When obviously there's like six or seven thousand people on the on the lagers, you know, all have you know all vo you know voicing their opinion about the referee, and everyone gets stuck in, and it's you know it's, it's quite raucous. Uh, when dragons tend to play away, you know they, they can sometimes come in for some some bigger defeats. Um, I, what, I saw that on Instagram the Stormers training. Um, I, and Neil might know better than I do. It looked like Libok was involved. Um, Dion Fury could be could be back. Um, a couple of the a couple of the key guys. Uh, I don't know if Ori will be back. It'll be interesting. Um, I can't. I just can't trust the dragons. Um, I thought they were quite poor. Last week against the the, um, the Lions, uh, yeah, I thought the Lions should have done better than what they did. Uh, I think a lot of us were on the overs on Lions. A lot of a lot of that Dragons play looks just very unstructured and uh, very unskilled in my opinion. And, and it's no sledge on the dra on the Dragons, but I just thought they were very poor times. Um, I probably will look here at. And I know it's probably be flying against the grain here. Um, Frank Murphy is the referee. So that's already an unders alarm bell. Um, but I think it's a, a 130 kickoff in PE. So it should be good weather. Um, I like Stormers over 37.5. Um, the reason saying, I, you know, if you think that Stormers basically put 36 pass, I would say a better Scarlet's team. Um, and then Dragons conceded 33 against a very, very poor Lions effort. Um, on average, the line, the last three Dragons away games was in about, I think, 36, 37, 38. So it's hovering in and around that range. Um, I just think we probably might see a far more polished performance by the Stormers with one or two uh, better players providing a bit more impetus. Um, I also will say that maybe the Lions, Stormers, Sharks and Bulls, and similarly, this Welsh sides, we're, we're a little bit uh, under-polished from the, you know, their break-off. Etc. I think the Stormers might be a little bit more polished this this second game in, um, and hence yeah, I'll, I'll I'll probably look at over thirty seven point five for the Stormers and just hope that you know it's nice, it's a good game of rugby, and uh, Frank Murphy allows the guys to play a little bit. Oh, well, the boys are a little bit uh, diff in differing sides for for this game. Um, just Mark raising the point about attendances in the URC, and yeah, Mark, fair point. I mean. It has been said, obviously, South Africa got big stadiums, so you could fit 6,000 people in, and it doesn't look like many. But, you know, if it was a smaller stadium, it would look better. But I think, yeah, I don't know. I speak personally. I just like to watch all the games on TV. It's so comfortable. You've got your laptop, this and that. And, and you know, it's actually quite sad in a way. But, uh, you know, I think perhaps if they move to the smaller stadiums, they, they, they might be able to get some some joy there. Right, let's move on. Uh, Zebra plus 12 and a half against the Glasgow Warriors. I just want to quickly go look at the... The forum post here because I, I got a feeling that this line might have it's might have moved a little bit, Brendan. Uh, yeah, the, oh no, it was about fourteen and a half. I actually kept this game at plus four and a half zebra, but I might have got it horribly wrong. Uh, conductor, what do you think? Yeah, Brent, just to touch on your point regarding the stadiums, I I'm in full agreement. I think specifically a, a, a franchise like the Lions will definitely benefit from moving uh, away from Ellis Park to perhaps a smaller stadium. In a different part of Joburg, which is which is slightly more accessible um, and a little bit more family friendly. I know at Ellis Park, uh, you need to go through with a sort of a right shield and uh, an armored car at times. So yeah, I think that could definitely benefit. And yeah, I mean, but I must say, I am for the first time in a while contemplating going to watch the Bulls versus Lyon next week because I think that could be a cracker uh, of a European fixture. Yeah, but. It is. It is a. It is a big thing. We don't. We don't fill stadiums. But like you say, it's because our stadiums. Obviously, we play in big stadiums. But um, on this one, um, I, I sort of opened plus fourteen and a half. I managed to snag a bit, a bit of on the plus. Um, yeah, you know, it's always. It's always a bit dangerous trusting zebra, given their history. Um, and obviously, we, we we're waiting for that Italian fade, where basically they sort of like that that initial uh, excitement and and. Um, bravado or the start of the season starts to wear off uh but but i've been impressed i was impressed with zebra last week yes they lost to ulster but geez i mean uh the way they pushed Ulster at points at times i was very very impressed and given that that was a very very uh, rotated zebra team 
they arrested a lot of players. A lot, a lot of their key players didn't tra- make the trip to Belfast. So those guys will be starting against Glasgow. Um, I'm just hoping that Tiff Eden, I haven't seen the injury report of Tiff Eden. I'm hoping he'll be back at 10 for, for Zebra and I'll be all over the plus here. Uh, Glasgow have been absolutely horrendous away from home. Um, I think their, their losses have been, I actually wrote it down, interesting enough. Away from home has been by 35, 28, 15 and 22. So they've taken absolute drubbings away from home. Um, so yeah, they've been they've been very poor, uh, and it's hard to trust them away from home. Yeah, uh, yeah, you know, I think Zebra could get up could get up. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if they win the game. Right, Neil's just pointing out your ticket prices for the URC are certainly cheap, so that's not the issue there. Neil, anything uh, to add on the tickets or the attendance, and uh, anything on this game? Yeah, Brent, I think you, you hit the nail on the head. I think just with with regards to attendance, it's just it's a it's sort of a, a tough one to to sort of get your head around. In Cape Town, the the stadium's in a superb area, so it's got like a keen gaze on like sort of the, the mid mid to mid to twenties coming in. Ticket prices are fantastic. There are a lot of mm. sort of like hip and happening places places around. It's the home fa- home venue of the of the seven, so there's a lot of interest there. So it's easy to sort of attract supporters. But I think for other parts in the country, it just adds a bit, bit of a glitch into the matrix, as as one would say. So yeah, it's, it's it's a tricky one. I just think that with live sport, it just comes down to what 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 the country does. I think a big factor as well, which people do forget, is that in South Africa we have Super Sport, which which broadcasts absolutely everything and anything. Every single game of the rag, of the of the URC is televised, so we've got the we've got the fortunate ability of watching it at home. Whereas in the UK, it's a lot of games aren't televised, so you are forced to sort of make your way down to the local ground and and get behind your side. So people forget sort of the dynamic that that is at play there. But yeah, touching on the on the zebra uh, Glasgow spreads, yeah, for me this is a zebra plus all the way. Um, Glasgow are, are four or zero from four in on on away games this season so far been absolutely dreadful they've it's one of those a bit of a flash rack bully as you would like capitalize at home just really put the put teams to the sword but on on away from home they just really like to get stuck into the beers in the hotel the and the buffet breakfast so at 12 and a half of the zebra i think that the glasgow warriors will be more focused on the on the sort of italian heritage sites than, than the team itself i think that's cracking value the zebra have been putting together some some relatively respectable performances. So I think it's a bit of a disrespect. This is a seven and a half point handicap for me. So happy to jump on the plus here. Yeah, I'm very much in alignment. I see I capped this game here, four and a half. I'm just laughing when you're talking about opening of beers. I heard that like distinctive opening of a beer there on on the, on the conductor's side. It was, <laughs> a, it was certainly perfect timing. Mark Dunphy just pointing out that he might be in South Africa to watch the Leinster game against the Bulls in April. And Mark, if that's the case, 100%, I'll definitely be there. I'll be wearing my Leinster top which I must tell you, I'm, I'm not wearing it tonight because it's packed safely in my luggage. I'll be wearing it to the UK. In fact, I, I think people might think I don't have any other shirts. I wear that lens the top so, so often at the moment. But uh, let's get into the next game and we'll stick with you there. Thoughts on sports. Connacht, minus nine and a half against Benetton, who I think were many people, uh, I know, uh, conduct you fancied an art drive last week and they, they delivered the goods. Uh, yeah. Benetton are now plus nine and a half, Neil, and 47 and a half points line. Brent, if I'm always allowed one sort of joker card on on the show, and if there's one game I would would love not to bet on, it's it's exactly this one, just for right. for a couple of reasons. So, like Benetton have been absolutely dreadful away from home. They've they've copped they've copped uh, like 35 to to, 30, to 40 points from Glasgow, copped 40 points from Edinburgh, I think copped 50 points from Leinster. They've just taken absolute beatings. On the road and and I, I guess you would expect that form to continue but i just look at their side and i feel like they've just got a trick or two up their sleeve and connect are one of the sides who do struggle against against a big minus so this 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 handicap falls right bang in the middle of where sort of i would have capped it so it just seems like one of those games where it's like sit back relax enjoy enjoy what it has to offer if anything so i it's it's a no bet for me but if if i'm pushed if you sort of Hold me tight and, and ask me where where I'd love to go on this on this bet. It would be a, a tentative call on the Benetton Benetton plus. I just feel like this this for me is a five and a six point handicap. So at nine and a half, I think it's a bit generous. Benetton have been mighty impressive. Internationals back made some shoot signings from a couple of displaced wasps and and warriors players. So yeah, exceptionally tricky game. Connacht on the up. Benetton looking to write write their sort of 
their, their form book uh, in, a, in a different different language here. So yeah, tricky one, but tentative call on the Benetton Plus. Right, interesting one, Matt. Uh, Brendan, I can tell you, I actually handicapped this game exactly at nine and a half. So for that reason, I don't have a very firm view on this one either. You got anything for us or is this a game? No, I'm, I'm 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 a bigger fish to cry. Yeah, I've got complete agreement with Neil on this. Uh, as, as he says, you know, um, I think the last three Benetton losses away from home have been like 35, 37, and I think 45 in and around that region. So they've been spanked away from home. But, um, yeah, I, yeah, and they've played really, I mean, I, you know, I must say, I, c- I cannot believe what they did for me last week. I, I thought after 10 minutes when that when um, um, Matteo Manozzi got that red card for Benetton, I thought my best bet and and all my loot was was hosed and they absolutely showed such determination and i was you know it was a long 70 minutes say hey, geez damn it's like watching the sisterhood of the traveling pants with your girlfriend you're like geez you can't wait for the for the to end it just just seems to carry on and on and on so it was just yeah it was it was nail biting to watch me and it's and claw, claw the way to a victory there so i was very happy with that performance but away from home away from the uh, community de Manigo, um yeah that's a different situation then uh, not often as, as determined they, they played a lot of the italian internationals in that game against edinburgh so i'm skeptical as to how many are going to travel away to the sports ground in uh galway to play this uh, game but um i'm going to differ a little bit to neil um, i'll go very, very small on the connacht minus i know andy friend did say during the midweek he they very very desperate to get five points um and you know with a team like uh, john porch Mac Hansen, uh, Bundy Aki, you know, Jack Carty, a couple, you know, very, very, some very, very decent players. And that's, that, um, uh, 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 gone aside. It's, yeah, it's a tough one, but I can also see Benetton keeping it close. So this is a, this is not a bet you really want to be flying into on the weekend. This is really, really stay away kind of stuff. Well, we'll stick with you for the next game. And I know what your fancy is here because I did see your tweet early in the week. Blue Bulls here, we got minus 14 and a half. I think the handicap might have edged out just a little bit. Up against Cardiff, of course, pulled off that miraculous 35 0 away win over the Sharks last week. And we yeah. got a points line of 51 and a half. Man, I haven't, without even hearing what you've got to say on the points, I'm going to show that that's a tempting one. It is. You know, it is, Brent. I'm only concerned the game's at eight o'clock at night. Um, so I'm a little bit concerned. In Pretoria, it's it's now. I'm sweating. I'm sweating now. Like as I'm talking to you, it's getting hot now. Um, so mm. that that sort of it does get sweaty at night. Um, yeah, you know, the conditions should still be immaculate. I saw Pine Pinoff on the Bulls say that they're anticipating rain. I've got. I haven't seen any rain on in terms of my weather apps. Uh, he, he, I, in the article today, he said he was a bit concerned because you know it could be rain for this game again, and you know how do they handle it, etc. It looks all clear on my side um so i'm not going to touch i don't like that blue bulls defense um yes K- kane and moody is back i think mark of is back johan Gerson's back i just don't trust that bulls defense at all um so i'm going to stick to the tried and tested it worked for me last weekend i'm not going to fix what ain't what ain't broke so i'm going to take bulls over 32.5 um i think this cardiff team has quite a few injuries uh or doubts we call it brackets soft brackets um, um i i think there's about six players from that 23 that played against the sharks that might be missing max guys like max llewellyn thornton domachowski um I th- you know obviously i think uh, three others uh so yeah i think they've called for shane lewis hughes to fly out to join them uh but i think cardiff for me did what they needed to do they've got their their win for the tour and now it's enjoying uh, beers on the roof at, at loftus Having a having a quick squiz at the girls uh, walking by and uh, yeah halfway on the foot to to our oh, tambo and back to you know enjoying the last bit of sun before they head back to a very very chilly Wales. So yes, right, sorry, Bulls over thirty two point five mm-hmm. is my bet to 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 wade through all all the this the, what I just said the Bulls over thirty two point five. <laughs> okay, no, no, we we got that one right. Thoughts on sports. No, Brent. I think conductor summed it, summed it up like absolutely superbly there. I don't. I don't care if it's if it's raining, if it's snowing, if it's whatever, whatever. Bulls thirty two and a half is an absolute gift. The Bulls are going to absolutely romp home here. The Bulls don't give two shits about defence here, but the one thing they do enjoy is is scoring bucket loads of tries. So, if the if the Bulls score forty, uh, Cardiff will score twenty. If the Bulls score score thirty five, 
Cardiff will score score fifteen to sixteen. It's just one of those one of those type of type of fixtures. So I just think if you can if you can nail in at a at a Bulls thirty two and a half, it'll it'll be snowing, and I I would still lay lay a chunky sum of cash down. So I just think that Bulls they just got such so much so much forward momentum. They get welcoming players back. This team just plays with so much confidence. They don't love to defend. They love to sort of sort of express it out wide. Cardiff played their final last weekend. Lots of bruised bodies after last weekend. It's it's a bit disrespectful that the bookies are offering us 51 and a half. That's right for the taking. Bulls Bulls could score 50 50 on their own in, in on a good day. So yeah, that's 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 a line with with absolutely smashing in my opinion. Well, I'm certainly going to get involved in this one. I'll be somewhere flying up above. I don't know where. Uh, when this is taking place, I'm not too sure if I'll be able to track it or not. But yeah, I certainly, <laughs> I mean, it certainly jumped out at me as well. I like that Bulls line, and I certainly like that uh, that overs total points line as as well. There, right, Neil? We'll stick with you for the next game. We've got Leinster minus ten and a half here against Ulster. These sides, you know, I suppose the big rivals ultimately both in the top three in the betting. Leinster firm favourites at five to ten to win the title, and uh, yeah, we got a points line here, fifty point five. Anything stand out for you? Yeah, Brent. I early doors. I like Ulster to to cover the spread just for for a couple of reasons. So, so in my opinion, this fixture has boiled down quite a lot in like recent years. A couple of years back, this was this was a, le- a lens to like a romp home victory. This was sort of a 15, 16 point handicap where lens would always just just cover this with ease. But this fixture is coming come coming to the full where it, it's almost like a a north south derby in the sense that it's it's two teams which can absolutely get, go toe to toe with one another. A string of internationals across each fixture. They got no respect for one another. It just it's just a battle of the bruises type thing. So as soon as I see a, a double digit spread, you must remember when these two sides last met, um, Ulster I think produced their first ever victory at the RDS away from home. So they've gone, they've done it in the past. That's a big monkey off their back. So big confidence here. So I'm just getting ten and a half on what I believe is are the two best sides in the ERC, two most consistent sides, two two sides with the most quality, most most able to handle pressure i think this is going to go right down to the wire so 10 and a half yeah this is at least five points too big i capped this at four and a half five and a half so happy to to lump on the ulster plus here right i just quickly went to look at my cap i did say leinster minus nine and a half but happy to be swayed persuaded to go for ulster there conductor are you in agreement i know mark dumphy will be watching there um but in fact let me give you mark's comment he says leinster will win but not sure about 10 so effectively Sort of rubber stamping Neil's uh, Neil's views there. What do you think, uh, conductor? No doubt, our mate Dave will be at the game. No, absolutely, Brenty. Um, uh, I'm trying to look at this uh, like Inspector Poirot on the Orient Express from all angles to try and see where where I'm going to find something. I found nothing in this game. I can't make an argument for the minus. I can't make an argument for the plus. I think Leinster do get back Jordan Lamour, Lama. Um, not, he's not in love. It's Jordan Lama and Hugo Keenan. Uh, sorry, not, not Hugo Keenan. Sorry, James Lowe. And um, they get the, those two back. Apparently, Sexton might be back for this game. Um, but exactly like Neil says, this has become such a ding dong battle. Uh, very, very tight between two very, very good teams. You know, I've got massive, massive respect for Dan McFarland, one of my favorite coaches in the world. I love the way he's coached this Ulster team, and I love this Ulster team. So I can't, uh, I can't gain, go against his lads. Um, at half past nine on Saturday night, um, after the Bulls game, after the overs romps in easily, um, I'm going to crack open a lot of wine, which apparently I'm only allowed to do now after I've done betting. My girlfriend has prohibited me from drinking any wine while I'm betting. So the rules on rules. So I'll be drinking a lot of wine uh, during this game and hopefully enjoying a cracker. Uh, in Dublin. Right, Mark Dumphy just confirming Sexton's out a hundred percent. And yeah, I like the way the girlfriend's laying down the betting rules there. I think that's <laughs> uh, that's absolute quality. I think we got one more game then in the URC, and that's uh, we'll start with you there, conductor Lions up against the Scarlets. Minus eleven and a half and a points line fifty one and a half. This looks a lot like the Dragons game last week, and I don't know. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I would you know maybe Lions are a bit rusty. You know, you'd think there'd be points, but yes, it's just after last week's disappointment. It was such a that first half was just such a dismal half of rugby. It was I mean, two today. I mean, they were pl- keeping in the forwards, and when they turned to the back line, there was no back line. You know, it was it was just a terrible game. Um, what do you think of this one? Are we going to give the Lions another crack? No, that 
that first half in Johannesburg was more shitty than Durban water. Jeez, yeah, it was just filthy. Like screaming at Sahelin Nohamba to get, get the ball out the back of the back of the rack. And I mean, he's just. Uh, and I, I saw Henrik Swartz's comments, and I'm completely in agreement. Your biggest, biggest advantage for Lions and Bulls is playing at altitude. Why on on heaven's earth would you want to slow the ball down? Even if you play at a frantic yeah. pace, you make mistakes. That's fine. But tie the guys out. I mean, you know, Nohamba. I, generally, I thought he was a quicker scrum off. Uh, then when Andre Warner came on off, I knew that was going to be the end of end of that uh, oh. that overs for the Lions. They so just <laughs> I knew it, it was just then, yeah. oh it just yeah, it was like race over and like I, I'm, I almost said what you're doing now just downing my bed. I'm like you know consign myself to losing that bet, but really it, it should have been better uh, in both respects. Uh, but but I can't ignore that 51.5. I'm going to take overs. It would have arrived in the last five of, of the six games in URC for in Johannesburg. Hoppers one kickoff in Johannesburg. Um, it should be quite hot. Um, I'm just hoping that Scarlets don't slow it down too much. Um, I do believe that Dane Blacker and Sam Costello has joined the Scarlet side. Um, Dane Blacker should be quite quick off the off the base. Um, I'm just hoping that last week was more of a Lions trying to get the monkey off the back with a win at home, and now they've got that done. And hopefully there'll be a bit more expression. Um, Keen Horn maybe wasn't comfortable at the back. Uh, obviously, for uh, what is Andres? Uh, what Andres? Can't remember what is uh, the, the, yeah, the ex lines, ex Italy, ex wherever. He was at fullback for most of the time, but now Keen Horn was there. So I'm hoping there's a bit more fluidity. Um, I'm hoping for, I don't know how serious Ruin for Mark's injury is. I'm hoping he's back. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm going to take overs, overs, yeah. Um, I, I was quite, I, I, I didn't, I wasn't totally unimpressed with the Scarlet's performance against the, the Stormers. I thought they could have done better, but I'm, I'm hoping, you know, they just throw the, 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 the old Gilberts around at, uh, you know, at Ellis Park and hopefully it's a good game. But 51.5 at altitude has to be taken. Yeah, I must say last week, I just, you actually got me thinking now. And last week, if you read my previews, you'd be surprised I lost money last week because I was overs on the Bulls, overs on the Stormers, overs on the Lions game. But then as kickoff approaches, you start getting clever. And then I'm overs on Lions points, you know, that type of thing. So maybe just the way to go here is just go properly on the overs. Let's get uh, Neil's comments on this one before we touch on a bit of Gallagher. No, Brent, spot on. This this over 51 and a half deserves to be punished here. Um, yeah, it's just a bit disrespectful. I think it should be at least a 55, 56 point, point game if you ask me. And then just, just touching on the cap, just, I don't know, this Lions side, it's it's tough to back. They they love being underdogs, hate being favourites. Scarlet similar boat, I think. So I just think like eleven and a half year, I, I like I like a small nibble on the on the lines minus. It's tough to make a case for for the Scarlets with this sort of line. It's a, it's a talented lines outfit. They they settled. They don't lose a lot of a lot of players to sort of the to to bark duty. So they've trained a lot together. The Scarlet's team just looks a bit disjointed. They they would have gone over to Cape Town. They would have enjoyed the. The likes of of Cabrice in the town side had an absolute drizzle, got humbled on on the Friday night, flown across to Joburg. The, the, the air's a bit tighter there; they can't do can't do as much damage sort of on the on the town side with the woman there. Then they got to play a, a sort of a, a Sunday kickoff. So yeah, it, it just doesn't look too too pretty for for Scarlets over here. They were sucking they were sucking their lungs out on a on a Saturday night uh, with the ladies, and now they got to play a, a Sunday kickoff here. So. 11 and a half, yeah, I don't know. It just seems that there's too much in favor of the Lions here. I hope that uh, Cash Van Rooyen is keeping his, his boys in check. And he's not allowing any sort of funky business, uh, making sure that they're drinking their water, hydrating, getting to bed at, at 9.30 at night, not, not causing too much problems on the, on the Johannesburg Strip. So if that's the case, if, if there's a tight ship getting, getting around at the Lions, I like the, like the minus and the overs here. Yeah, I must say leaning in, in both of those directions as well. Uh, we'll move on to Gallagher Premiership in just a sec, just to see uh, what the, the boys say. Uh, Johan Estes and said all of the matches uh, should be overs, but depends on the Sharks' attitude. Yeah, that's a good point. We'll we'll see what happens there on that one. Right, we'll move on to Gallagher Premiership. We'll just have four games to chat about. And, uh, Neil, I'll start with you here. This is probably Friday night, right? Bath Rugby against Harlequins. We've got plus one and a half Bath and a points line of 52.5. Yeah, Brent, uh, this is a strong fancy first up here. Um, in my opinion, Bath, massive, massive team on the up. Uh, the Rex turning to sort of a, a 16th person on the field. It's it's going to be bitterly cold in, in the UK this weekend. 
and and when you're playing at the rec, the the, the crowd's practically on on the field. So Harlequins are, are traveling up here. Yeah, you got you got Kerr and, and Tommaso Allen pairing up. It 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 doesn't scream too much for me. Don Brandt at eight. He's been overlooked in the English setup. Offers a lot of off the back there. But I just feel like this fixture is just a, it's a fixture that Harlequins don't want to play. They don't want to play a nine forty five kickoff over over at Bath. A massive team on the up. They've recruited a couple of boys from Worcester Warriors. To be honest, they've recruited the two best players in Ted Hill and and Ollie Lawrence. They've made a massive difference. Uh, Bath have been producing performance after performance in the last four weeks. This is a big thing. This is the wrong wrong side of the spread for me. So I'm not even going to bother with the with the Bath plus one and a half. I'm going to be taking Bath minus two and a half. I think that's at about fourteen to ten. So that's my play. Very very confident on that. So yeah, locking that in right now. Right. Let's see what a conductor goes. Of course, we we have been doing a Friday show, but with me going away now, I thought we better get some Gallagher in. So we may not have all the team news and stuff yet. In fact, I know we don't. But what do you think of this one, uh, conductor? Yeah, Brent. So it's 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 funny how life works. Hey, like uh, Johan van Kran must have been must have been hating everything in life. Uh, must have been cursing his luck, kicking the dog in the morning, stubbing his toe on the furniture. Until this this ray of sunlight appeared in his life, which was the um, Worcester Warriors being dismantled and, and no longer being part of the Premiership, because suddenly all their players became available, and he snapped it up like a, a crazy sale. And um, yeah, he's, he's been able to plug big holes with you know some of these players that have left other clubs. And uh, like Neil says, Ollie Lawrence. I mean, he's just a fantastic player. I mean, if you take that that uh, 10, 12, 13 of Orlando Bailey, Cameron Redpath, and uh, Ollie Lawrence. That's his, that's, that's superb. 10, 12, and 13. Um, Bath won last the won the last three in a row. Completely agree. Um, I think that beats was it? Ta- I think they beat Tigers. I think they beat Tigers at the Rec. That's a hell of a win. And uh, I think Quinn's in for some pain. And no Marchants, no uh, Northmore, no Marcus Smith. Whew, it's a tough game at the wreck. And like like uh, Neil says, it's a very, very intimidating crowd. When they sniff blood in the water, um, I think Quinn's in for a very, very tough night there. I think you can get plus three and a half, actually, I've seen. So I'm I'm, I'm big on the plus there. I really, really think uh, Bath will keep this very, very tight. They'll, you know, a guy like Dave Atwood uh, in, in the locks, just such a warrior. You know, there's a couple of these guys for Bath putting their hands up. Quinn's are a superb side, but I just feel the momentum's completely with Bath in this respect. So, yeah, I mean, it's I, I, it's hard to ignore the plus there. Right, we'll go on to the next game. I'm just looking around here. They're definitely two and a half, and I'm sure probably three and a half if you shop around there. Let's go on to the next game, Conductor. We'll stay with you. London Irish minus six and a half against the Falcons. And we've got a high points line here, 56 and a half. I did see on Twitter, and I don't know if it was you, but someone was suggesting yeah. London Irish overs. So I uh, initially piled into London Irish over 30.5. A reason being, um, Newcastle Falcons had a great win last week against Exeter in in Newcastle. I think that you know that might be their you know their job done for that sort of two week period. Um, you know, really really scrapped to get that that game one. Um, generally, their their defence away from home is very leaky. I think it was three out of four games they've gone plus 30. They've leaked. So very happy to take London Irish over 30.5 and um, also very, very happy on London Irish on the minus. I really think this is a must-win game for London Irish. Um, they were so super impressive against the Exeter Tigers. Um, I thought at times they, they probably could have won it. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm really expecting a big bounce back from Irish. Uh, they, they just see their, their box so clever as a club. Um, yeah, and I'm, I, you know, I love that minus. You know, missing a guy like Arundel and, and Kyle Rowe, but there's so much quality in that in that side, and they they're just absolutely able to leverage every single uh, ounce of talent out of their players. So very much like the minus and like the over thirty point five uh, for Irish, and and also taking into account, I didn't know that before I put the bet down, but it's also Wayne Barnes on the whistle uh, for this game, and he's a big overs ref. So sitting even sitting even prettier with the overs there. Right thoughts on sports? You're going to rubber stamp that one. Yeah, Brent. Um, less so on the on the fifty six and a half. Just it just it just shouts like a massive line for sort of a, a nice kickoff over in the Premiership when 
when conditions are sort of turning. I feel like this is the type of line that you get like early on in the season. So tentative call call for me there. So I'll I'll rather stay out on the points line there. But that's that minus six and a half. I think that's worth taking here. I know Dwayne Barnes is a massive plus ref. He tends to sort of blow often against the attacking side if they look to infringe at the breakdown. He often gives the benefit of the doubt to to sort of the defensive side here. So Falcons could get put under a lot of pressure and, and sort of turn out with a reward here. But I just think that London Irish was so impressive last weekend. They already just fought fought like hard against the Tigers. It was a fantastic game to watch, 33-31. And I just think that's at home against against Falcons. Falcons love love to sort of drag teams up north into their home stadium there in bitterly cold conditions and sort of grind out results. So at minus six and a half, yeah, I think London Irish are worth, worth taking here. Right, we'll stay with you for the penultimate game of our show, Gloucester Rugby, minus four and a half against the Northampton Saints. Sure, Brent, this is an interesting one. If this game was getting played two or three months ago, I would have lumped onto to the Saints here. But once again, this, this game's getting played in the first week of December. Uh, the Saints, the Saints love, a, love a fast turf. They love getting love the fixture getting played at Franklin's Gardens. They love, they love the socks down approach. The water coot is getting brought on every five minutes. Sort of the clear cut conditions, the, the the smell of fresh grass, but this this is not to be. This is this is traveling traveling to to King's Home Stadium, traveling up against the against the Gloucester Mall. Gloucester played no nonsense rugby. Gloucester had a fantastic start to the competition, fell off the bandwagon a bit, but this is this is where they jump straight back on against against Northampton side who love to love to throw the ball around. So I see this game as as going one way. Northampton trying to sort of play to Gloucester's weaknesses and trying to look to spread, but just ultimately making mistakes. Uh, just not playing, not playing the right side of the whistle. Just falling on the wrong side, wrong side. Just losing the set piece battle here. So at minus four and a half, I think this is an absolute cracker. This this goes down as one of my best bets of the of the English Premiership this weekend. Right, and uh, conductor was that a little head nod I saw there? Yeah, no, it's not a little one. It's a big one. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think that uh, that running more of Gloucester is going to come into full effect this weekend against Northampton Saints. Um, yeah, as as Neil says. You know, as punters, you need to sort of you need to adjust to conditions like any any good sportsman. You know, you can't apply anything universally across the entire year. Even if you're playing if you're playing European tour or PGA, you got to adapt to the conditions. And as the the temps drop in the UK, the points lines will drop, and you got to you got to think to yourself: Is this game suited for Northampton Saints, who generally like to be a bit more expansive, like to run a bit more with Alex Mitchell? Darting off the base, or is it more suited to a Gloucester style of rugby, where it's some big bruising carries or off the off the side of the the ruck and some big mauling? Um, yeah, I think that that maul is it's going to be it's going to be very very tough to stop. So I'm on the minus as well. Yeah. Right, we've got one game left to chat about. In fact, our last game that we're going to cover this year, certainly, unless I get a <laughs> some sort of inspiration and and do a show from the UK. Bristol Bears conductor plus one and a half against the Leicester Tigers. Brent, I'm going to take Bears on the board here. Um, I just think they're desperate for the win. Uh, the big man, Semi Randrandra, is back. Um, they were boosted by the, the return of Stephen Nuatua last week. And we, and we actually saw what an incredible difference he made to that side. He's just Captain Fantastic. Where's the S, the S under the, under the, the uh, suit uh, blazer? And you can just see he leads from the front, etc. Um, yeah, you know, some very, very key guys returning for Bears at the right time. Obviously, I think Sinclair's injured for this game, but Ellis Gange will be playing against his old team. So a lot of feeling in that one. Uh yeah, I like I like Bears on the on the plus and I like Bears on the board. Um I think they Pat Dame will know that the physicality is coming. And I I think Bears Tigers are a good team, but I just don't think they as invincible as they were last season. I think there's some chinks in that armor. And I think the Bears could exploit. So I, I like the Bears on the place and the Bears to win. Right. And final one from you, Neil. Yeah, Prince. I think conductors stole my show here. Yeah. Very much similar sentiments on the Bears. The the only worry for me is the Bears sort of welcoming Simi Randrandra back. Um, if they're sort of, I don't know, he's been out of, he, he hasn't played a, a single fixture all season if he looks to sort of, if he hits the ground running. But but the Oak is so, is so good at what he does. He's just the ultimate professional athlete that I've got no sort of worries of that. And and for me, the big the big the big factor here is Ellis Genge um, up, up at Ashton Gate against his old side. He's going to be massively motivated here, 
and and Tigers have just fallen off off on the wayside a little bit recently. Haven't been getting the results they wanted. Sort of. I know Steve Borthwick's an absolutely uh, class operator, but it's not easy traveling up to Ashton Gate, even if Bears are sitting like near to the bottom. Bears have been targeting this fixture for, in my mind for the last three to four weeks. They've been talking about this during the whole international break. So this is this is the big fixture they want. They want this victory. Right here. So at, at plus one and a half, I, I just can't look past the best at underdogs. It's the best I'm happy happy to lose here. So I'm I'm also going to stick my neck out and also take that minus one and a half at about thirteen to ten on the bears. Right, for Reed going against the panel there, he reckons uh, Tigers for him. Right, gents, that brings us to the end of the show. And uh, time to get into the best bet. Still time for conducted a crack open another one there. <laughs> <laughs> Impressive stuff. So, conductor, we'll start with you. What are your best bets for the weekend? Prince, I'm going to just go. Let me just look at my notes here quickly. Um, yeah, there's some there's some tricky fixtures this weekend, eh? I mean, there's no doubt. It's some of the some of the fixtures, like I say, don't you don't want to get lost in the woods because you can end up losing money. But um, just keep it simple. Bulls over thirty two point five for me. Bulls over 51.5. Um, and then collect your loot for the Saturday. Take the misses out for a nice Sunday brunch. Get home and then put over 51.5 in Joburg and enjoy your weekend. Excellent. Nice and simple there from the conductor. Thoughts on sports? No, Brent, I'm going to agree to all of conductor's picks there. I like I like the overs in Johannesburg and Pretoria. But I'm going to add one more um, that's that bath plus three and a half at eight to ten is an absolute snorter that deserves to be that deserves to be punished in my opinion it's a bet i'm happy to 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 stand by if it loses i take it full on the chin but to be to be honest this is the wrong favorite in my opinion so yeah take the plus three and a half if you're not feeling too if you're a little bit scared of scared of the the odds that get presented but i'm going to be taking the minus one and a half at 15 to 10. that's my bet excellent nice confident calls from the boys I'll uh, try work on the news and it'll probably come out from the airport tomorrow morning sometime. But guys, uh, first of all, to the guys in the live chat, uh, both on the show and all throughout the year, it's been great having your support. We've got plenty of uh, shows coming next year. We'll try a few new things on YouTube as well. And then to the panel, Neil, thanks for, for coming on, mate. Enjoyed it. Enjoy the rugby and, and good punting to you. Uh, thanks so much, Brent. Absolute pleasure to making making a reappearance on the show. But wishing you all the best in the in the UK. Hopefully, you can give us some like pitch site conditions there so we can capitalise. Yeah, I'd love to get to go to a game. I've also told my good old mate Brendan Brendan Old Coil. I said I'd love to go greyhound racing while I'm there. That's one of my objectives. I don't know if Trisha's my wife's plans and mine exactly coinciding at this stage. I don't think greyhound racing is really top of her <laughs> list of things of things to do there. And, and conductor, I know that. Um, you're not going to be able to come on the show uh, that often next year. You've got a lot of other things on the go, but as always been a pleasure having you on. And, and certainly, you know, whenever you can make it, just drop us a line, um, you know, and, you, and you'll, you'll always be welcome. Thanks, Brenty. I know it's, it's, it's been such a pleasure with you boys, and hopefully I'll be able to come on in the future and, and join you guys for a chat uh, when it's not too hectic. Um, and, yeah, I mean, Brenty, enjoy your, enjoy your travels. Uh, very, very safe travels, though. If it's a very, very lack of trip, et cetera, and uh, yeah, don't don't get up to too much mischief with the with the loggers, etc. And uh, yeah, keep, keep it keep it keep it keep it safe. And uh, to a lot of the guys, yeah, guys, it's been an absolutely fantastic year. Um, obviously, I'm Twitter, but the last time I'll be on the show or the show, show this year, uh, to a lot of guys, enjoy your festive season. If you're traveling, safe travels, safe punting, and uh, yeah, guys, enjoy it. Enjoy the time with your family. It's been a it's been a testing year, especially for South Africans. It's uh, it's an adventure in the south and uh yeah to everybody all the best uh great punting and uh, a safe festive season well, mark has the final word saying hopefully you come back conductor you don't want to lens the man replacing you know we could we couldn't possibly have that i can also say well, i've seen the prices of beers in the pubs in the uk i'm not so sure how many of those i'll be having <laughs> anyway thanks everyone uh, we, I wouldn't. I normally say we'll see you next week for the handicap, but we'll see you sometime early in January for the handicap rugby chat that matters.